Animating creatures can be one of the most challenging parts of animation. Whether you're doing tigers, dragons, horses or monsters, it's always going to be harder than when you're doing a human. The main reason for this is you can't really film reference. In this video, I'm going to break down some planning things we can do, some theory crafting, as well as some real life Maya tips and tricks that we can implement to make our animation smoother and make your workflow more effective. If it's useful, please subscribe and like the video, otherwise, please enjoy. So the very first thing we have to consider about the animation is what is the creature doing? What's the creature sort of, you know, what is the creature really? So if you're doing a tiger or a lion, it's pretty easy to find some references on YouTube and hopefully they match what you're trying to achieve. The issue of course is if you just copy a video, you know, you have, let's say a cat's jumping over a fence and you animate that cat just jumping over the fence, it might look like a good animation. And if it's what you need for your shot, that's great. However, often it's not quite exactly what you need. So in that situation, you have to really find a bunch of different references that kind of all kind of match what you're doing, kind of splice it together, and then hopefully you can make a good animation. Of course, the other side of the coin is if you're doing, let's say, a really complicated monster, and you obviously can't fill references for that. So what do you do? Well, the first thing to really consider is what is the creature's personality? What is the creature's I guess identity. If you're doing a monster like a, let's say from Avatar, they have those sort of cat-like dog creatures. Of course, you can use cats, dogs, hyenas, tigers. That can be your reference for that animal. That may seem kind of obvious, but then on, on top of that, you've got to think about where maybe they fit in the food chain. So for example, that animal might be the apex predator in that um, forest or that habitat. That would mean, of course, you need to think about they don't really have anything to fear. They're not going to be looking over their shoulder. They're not going to have any way to, I guess, suspect or detect prey coming after them. On the flip side, maybe you've got some sort of rabbit or some herbivore. They're always going to be kind of more subtle, more careful. They're going to be looking where they're going. And these tiny nuggets of like personality, you can really put into your creatures and they're going to really bring your characters to life. So let's look at this example here. This creature I found from a really good animator from Kill Figgins. I'll link down his website and stuff below. This doesn't really resemble any real creature. So what could you use for a reference for this? So when I look at this, I kind of think of a gorilla. I think the first thing, those big massive fists, it looks like a gorilla to me. So you can go on YouTube and you can find references of gorillas. Of course, maybe the way he charges is more like a rhino. So you could kind of take a part of a rhino, maybe part of a gorilla, and you kind of work with these things to bring it together to make, I guess, a new creature. So that's the first thing I would do when looking at this rig. The second thing I would do, and this kind of is the planning phase, but also kind of the Maya phase, I, I would think about how they walk. And thinking how they walk is really important to guess how they move around in every other animation you do. Now, I'm not saying you should do a walk cycle for every single rig you have, but at least if you can visualize in your head how they will walk, maybe they walk on their fists, maybe they walk on their hands, if they're like a sluggish walk, if they're a fast sort of trot type of thing, just how they move is really important to their personality, and that will dictate the rest of your animations with that. So that kind of all links together with their kind of personality. What do you do if you really can't find references? For example, dragons, right? You know, you can't really find a reference of a dragon. Yes, you can maybe use condors or vultures or big birds, maybe to give you an idea of how flight works. And that's definitely something you should do. But on top of that, let's think of maybe combining other animals together with flight. So look at baby dragons, for example, um, especially in Game of Thrones, you know, when I think Daenerys, the eggs hatch for the first time, they're kind of small, cute dragons, right? Now they can't fly yet. So maybe you can think of chickens, like a chicken, a baby chicken, or even a young chicken, the way the head moves is kind of similar to maybe how a dragon would move from where they interact with the, the world. You've got to really think of different animals and how they could maybe connect to your character. So more things to consider before we actually jump into Maya though, is the anatomy of your rig. The anatomy of a mammal is almost identical to a human, where the bone structure obviously is slightly different with length and with orientation, but the actual way it's set up is the same. So if you look at a bear, for example, versus a human, if, you, if your man was to just bend over and go on all fours, the rig or the setup of the skeleton would almost be identical. This is really important because when you're doing your creatures, you don't need to think about all these weird different motions. For the majority of motions, for like mammals at least, you can kind of think how would a human do that if they were trying to copy it. That being said, there's a difference between copying movement and copying personality. You've got to make sure when you're doing these sort of motions, you're having the same personality of a creature, 
but you can still kind of get on the floor or get your camera out and do the motion yourself if it's practical. And if you look at birds as well, birds actually have a pretty similar anatomy to like humans, but you know, their wings are basically their fingers and their wrist can rotate as in the wrist of the hand has the same orientation as our wrist and stuff. So, you know, if you can't bend your hand back a certain way, neither can a dragon. And if you keep this in mind when doing your animations, it doesn't seem so alien. And even the most strangest, weirdest creatures, they still got to follow the rules of their anatomy. And just bear that in mind when doing your animation and you won't get so lost or confused when animating big or crazy, strange monsters. So that's all great. So now you've got this idea of what the character is and how he walks, how he runs. Let's think about how we can actually animate this in Maya. So the first thing I would do is really set up your rig correctly. Now, I have um, made the mistake before of animating straight away after finding my reference going in and going in blind, basically. The issue with this is you're going to probably come across gimbal lock, other issues like that. So I have, for a long time now, I've been doing a trick where you can basically animate the rotations of the character, um, but you can put it onto two different controllers. Now, most rigs do have some sort of setup like this. If they don't, you can make a very easy sort of setup with a locator. So here you can basically take the locator, you can attach it to the rig, and you can also then freeze the transformations to make it zero, zero, zero. You can then constrain the controller of the, the hip or the cog, the main controller to the locator, and then take this locator. You can then lock the axis that you want to animate on the other controller. So this now means I can take this locator, do all the movement with the locator and the rotation in the Y, which is the side to side. And then on the cog, I can just animate the, the rolling and also the up and down. This means I'm never going to have an issue with gimbal lock. So for a real example of this, I have this dragon I'm doing and I've animated the flight controller and I've done all the animations here except for the rotation Z. For the rotation Z, I've gone to the offset controller, which is basically built into the rig this time. And I've done the barrel rolling and stuff in that controller. This means when he turns the corner and banks around and it's coming into the landing point, I still have the correct rotations. My rig isn't gimbal locked at all. And I can just easily animate those curves as he comes in for the settle. This kind of thing really helps set up the animation process because you don't have to worry about, you know, just fighting with the rig or fighting with Maya as you go through the, the animation. The next thing I would do is work out what world space controllers you want to use in your animation. So for example, world space controllers are great maybe for the cog and even for the feet. Maybe for your first pass, you don't necessarily want to be animating the head in world space. You could do that in local space. So it follows the rig. I actually have a video about locators, how to swap things back and forth and make changes after you've done your animation to world spaces and local spaces. Check out that video. It kind of relates to this video. So hopefully it'd be helpful as well. But after you've done this initial pass of your kind of animation, you can then put these things back into world space, and animate them more effectively. This way you can have a very layered approach to animation and hopefully you can get a bit more realistic movement into the actual animation itself from the start. So talking of layer animation, what's actually the workflow you might use for this type of creature shot? In this example here, I've basically taken the rig, just with everything zeroed out. I've taken the master root controller, the one, the big one at the bottom of the circle one, and I've animated this basically through the scene with the camera, of course. This gives you a really quick overview of kind of the weight and also the speed of your shot. This is by no means the final, final path he's gonna take, but it just gives you a really good sense of, I guess, timing. Now the second pass I did, I take this animation, I transfer it onto the hips of the dinosaur or the irex, and also the feet, because that's where the contact points are. If you were doing a cat or any sort of quadruped, you would obviously put them onto the hands as well. But now I can get my placements in there. And after I get the placements in, I can start going in, adding in the weight of the chest, the side to side motion, the head can bob, and you kind of build in your animation layer by layer. So you can consider this pass, I guess, a blocking pass. And this pass, while it's not completely finished yet, is kind of nearly final. But what I've done here is I've just gone in and I've taken my controllers and I've added weight to them. So for every single contact point, so where, let's say, the foot hits the ground, think about how that would affect the rest of the body. So it's quite clear on this dragon here, for example. You've got to think about what's heavy and what's light. So as he hits the ground, you can imagine all these frills on his neck, they're going to start spinning and flapping around because they're quite loose, sort of flabby fat. But the hips and maybe even some of the um, the neck and the head, it's a lot more, I guess, rigid and it's got a lot more muscle there to hold his structure firm and strong. So that's not necessarily going to actually be jiggling around as much. So every single contact point, basically just think about what's 
being affected by that contact. Every single foot stomp, every single you know fist slam, every time something happens with a contact or an impact, just think how that information affects the body. So hopefully that was helpful. Definitely a bit of a rant in this video, but that's kind of what I've been doing in the last years is doing creatures so much. I wanted to kind of give some a little bit of advice to people out there. Of course, creatures are hard and it takes lots of practice and it's something I still haven't mastered and I'm still learning. So please, if you think something I've said is wrong or you think something I've said could you know, use some more context, please drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Um, otherwise, great. Thank you for watching and happy animating. Cheers. Bye bye.